Chadwick. Mr. Wright. How are you? Whoops. Whoops. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. I just had to make sure my mic was on. How are you, buddy? Doing good. Yeah. Is this the week that was? This is the week that was. Yeah. And you know what's really interesting, man, is I uh, worked on the magazine over the weekend. What did you do? Oh, my God. You should see it. It looks great. Have you seen it? Why are there ads for RC Cola on the banner? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> we got picked up by pick RC more Cola, Chad. Brand, could you? Chad, we got picked up by RC Cola. Well, there goes of... my Shasta orange deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a liter of cola. <laughs> and a Canada dry tonic water that nobody wants. <laughs> You know, if we could strike up a deal with OK and Surge, we might got something. I like the look. You like the look of OK? Have you tried OK Soda? Who 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 helped you set this up? Oh, I did. I I worked the shit out of this thing the other day. Oh, I'm sure it'll be. Should we show it'll, it? I'm sure it'll last for 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 many many weeks and months. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Exactly. Let's, let's should we should we show it? Uh, let's just show the, the new the new we look do, of the magazine. We do anyway. All right. So let's go. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is uh, this is the new look of the magazine. Very good. Yeah. So let's nice, go nice, to. Nice, uh, nice crane banner and. Um, let's talk about the submissions there. guidelines real quick, Chad. I, I switched them up. So let's start. Uh, do you want to you want to shout out who we are real quick, and then we'll get into submissions. Okay. For those of you listening to us for the first time we're very sorry no we, uh, <laughs> uh, we are oddball magazine <laughs> this is the week that was where we talk about the week that well was and uh, we will we'll go over the highlights that is everything and uh we'll give you some announcements as to uh what we're working on uh, there's a call for submissions for the horathon episode uh by episode i mean a full week or possibly week and a half of oddball magazine horror um modern horror i should say a modernized horror that's what the call for submissions is and we've already gotten a few nice uh pieces of art and yeah. and uh writing from several people we'll make those announcements uh when it's closer to the date i'm very excited nice um so i see the submissions page it looks nice thank you sir um I, I changed it around so it wasn't as snarky. I believe I got rid of the push car prize references. By the way, I figured out I could nominate you for a push car prize if I want, Chad. Well, beautiful. Next year, and I might as well put this out there now. Next year, I want to at least, at the very least, get people out for a best of the net. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess what we can do is if we find a poem that's like earth shattering, like, you know, one of uh, the cantos or something, we can literally nominate that as a, as a, a push card. I don't know if the push car prize uh, deadline is coming gone, sir. All right, but well. but we are able to. But yes, we are able to do that, and hopefully next year we'll have more of a guideline to do so. A lot of online journals don't, and uh, I, I feel disappointed about that. But I think we should step up and uh, give the poets who aren't columnists that are instrumental in delivering written work every Tuesday, Wednesday, and sometimes Friday. Uh, and sometimes Monday, the um, almost four days a week, the uh, proper credit they deserve. Hey, Chad, we have a whopping 150 people watching right now. That's terrifying. Yeah, there's a lot What's of people watching. People? I don't know. <laughs> 150, 150 people. people. 150. Good I'm Lord. just joking, Chad. There's nowhere close to that. But let's talk about We Are Not Your Typical Literary Magazine. Uh, so uh, We Are Not Your and Sorry typical... for the porn hashtags that may have misled you into coming here. <laughs> are those porn hashtags? I don't know. They might be. Uh, w equals E, A equals R, and N equals R. We are not your typical literary magazine. If you found us, there's nothing typical about you either. Hashtag Oddball Magazine. Uh, we enjoy work with rhythm. <laughs> deep stylish emotional clever and thought-provoking at oddball you will find underground spoken words slam haiku tanka sistinas bill nels classic academic experimental comics political graffiti music personal essays recovery stories reviews photography sculpture mental health advocacy ranging from striking political environmentally socially conscious lgbtqia plus performers artists poets column columnists cartoonists musicians and inclusive for all Oddball shows to abstract verse, disabled, deaf, 
neurodivergent, neurotypical. We strive for inclusivity. Um, Chad, did I translation? Did I Andy, cry for help. We'll be up for it. <laughs> if it's art to you, it's most likely art to us. <laughs> most likely art to us. So uh, send work to our submittable page. Uh, we don't have to. I mean, I, I got rid of the doc X thing. Like, are you really going to use a doc X to, to so if you don't know how to, you know, send our stuff to submittable page, use a three to five sentence bio as well. I use uh, doc X. <laughs> <Doc X. laughs> please note that all accepted submissions are open to or might be used in all of our oddball foundation media yada 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 we had the lobster bisque oddball is a classy magazine and we want only exclusive work from you uh oddball is always looking for timely submissions as a result responses for non-themed non-timely work may be our standard one to two months and uh we publish daily so uh thanks editors Seriously, what's wrong with DocX? I thought that was the updated version of uh, all Word documents. I just didn't have to tell people that they need to submit using a Doc, DocX, or PDF because you can also use JPEGs and and MP4s, and you can use any. You can literally like use anything to up upload to Oddball. Like you, you know what I mean? Like, why do I have to tell you what to? You know, if it, if it, if you can upload it, upload it, right? Why do I have to tell people what to do? Unless you want me to add that, Chad, then I will add it. I just feel oh, so. I feel I didn't know realize I was such a pariah for using <laughs> DocX. I'm gonna walk away right now. <laughs> I wish I could do it downstairs. Why is that music playing? Oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Um, all right, so uh, I'm gonna do a quick, quick, uh, quick uh, look at the magazine. So, do you? Um, it looks really cool on mobile, but. Um, by the way, this Glenn Bowie thing right here, holy cannoli. I know. Uh, so I, um, we That's use that. Picture. We use that for, uh, so, um, so now you can go to anything you want, right? Um, you know, on the right-hand side, you can see some more oddball stuff. Um, you can donate to us. This whole thing right here, you can donate to us if you want. Check out the oddball festival. But down here, we changed it a little oh, bit. Very nice. Yep. Um, Looks a little different. I tried to use all of our main um, artists, yep. um, and I tried to include all the stuff that we support and all that kind of stuff. And that's where we're at. And then I also added a big silver transparency of uh, of uh, transparency for 2023, and also a thank you for Oddball Festival. Can you explain the silver transparency? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, let's stop sharing for a second. So uh, transparency of um, uh, so business ethics, no. Um, so <laughs> that's from uh, Billy Madison. So basically, the silver seal of transparency is something you get if you are a nonprofit that is current on the level, doing things for the community, is open to exactly what they're doing. And if you actually click on it, um, if you click on um, our, uh, it goes right to the um, to our. Uh, Oddball Foundation Guide Star. So you can see our EIN, our tax deductibles, our IRS stuff, all that kind of stuff, our mission. Um, so is this uh, just something that, that we lost the gold transparency last year and now we're down to silver? Yeah. So we have, so I put and all these up. And then, uh, <laughs> so the reason why you, you get, so gold is kind of a, I mean, you can get gold if you want, but you have to put all your financials, all of your, and then you put your strategy. <laughs> your business strategy, your goals, your like every single thing on your thing. And we just, you know, honestly, we don't. I don't even have the last four years of taxes available for you. I'd be screwed. I'd be bronze transparency at best. <laughs> I'd go from silver to bronze to opaque. <laughs> opaque transparency. So you can see, oh, uh, there's Chad. He, what a vice president of the board. And uh, Chad, where'd you take that picture? Was that on? Uh, where, that was a selfie that? at. Um, uh, what's that pizza place that we liked, honey, uh, up on the top of the hill? And uh, Magoo, Magoo's? I don't know. Magoo's, Magoo's and Selfie that got crashed yeah. into? Yes, uh, Magoo's Pizzeria. That's uh, located at the top of um, the top of the hill in, in the corner between Dorchester Ave and Broadway. Oh, nice. Pizza good there? Yes, and they've survived at least two cars running into them. Mm -hmm. they, wow. they're, they're a tough little pizza place. Yeah. Then we, we got TJ anymore because where we live now, but uh, they were a tasty place. We got TJ. We got uh, uh, the YouTube page. We have 
um, the podcast. So you can definitely learn about us, uh, the Cherry Family Scholarship, all the stuff that we're trying to do with the uh, nonprofit. I don't know if we have anything about the Oddball Festival, but this is all stuff from the Michael Cherry Memorial Walk. That's my wife. Uh, that's Oddball Magazine, what it used to look like. Um, that's Train of Thought 2. Uh, some more publishing stuff. Uh, Echo Park. And uh, Books from Past Oddball Show guests. And the Oddball Show. And our fa- our pamphlet. So you're you missing out. TJ Edson to retweet all this and say it sucks. You know? That's all, <laughs> all we're missing. <laughs> and then... Um, so we basically, a lot of humor on the on the podcast, 150 people slowly <laughs> going down to 19. Sorry, yeah. sorry to let you know. All right, so let's get into it. So um, that's the so new yes. magazine. Yes, some other- this is Oddball Magazine. We're doing the last week of uh, from October, uh, from October 9th to October 13th. Yep. And uh, we start out and instead of the Sunday comics, some people have the Sunday comics. We have the Monday comics because all our cartoonists are busy getting the work done by Sunday. Oh, yeah. I just got the work from uh, Jeffrey Fallon done uh, and sent to me just about uh, an hour ago. So I'm very excited about uh, the new chapter of The Secrets of Skinny People. And how is Jeffrey and... doing these days? Say that again? How is Jeffrey doing these days? Jeffrey seems to be doing great. I'm hoping to run into him and maybe have lunch some, some weekend. I know he's still in the, he still lives in the Boston area. I think he works during the weekend still. But hopefully I'll be able nice. to catch him outside of the virtual world because That'd be he's, been, fantastic. He's, he's been hitting it he's been hitting it out of the park this case really secrets of skinny people features for those of you who don't know two nameless characters one's slightly based off jeffrey the other one's slightly based off uh, a person from Je- of a conglomeration of jeffrey's uh potent- many relationships uh, he initiated a random robot third character and the um, store current storyline, they're in the virtual verse or AI verse trademark and uh, TM, yep, T- TM, AI verse trademark, and um, all because they went into the jet, they to use chat GPT to write an episode, and now the mysterious written uh, AI written <laughs> character, Dr. Lucas, Dr. Is, Lucas, is taking over, is taking over the uh, the strip, leaving the uh, female character befuddled. So I, guess we'll, uh, so I guess you'll play the female character. I think it's a, almost a, a near solo monologue. Oh, boy. Uh, hopefully okay, you, you have the comic up. You do? Yes, you do. do. Yep, yep. So right. dramatic reading start right now. <clears throat> this is so typical. I can't believe those guys left me here in the middle of nowhere, like literally the middle of nowhere inside the AI verse trademark. I think Dr. Lucas not – May not be here to help us escape this place, but I can't think about that now. I need to find my numbskull friends. They might be in trouble. But how do I find them? This place is just a vast blank space. Hi there. Remember me? The high. Oh, that this is me. Yeah, you do that. I'll I'll do this one. Hi there. Remember me? <laughs> the high council of the Averse. This is kind of like my universe, remember? I can help you find your friends. Really? You'll help me? Of course, after all, I uh, have some unfinished business with random robot. Right. I'll just tuck that moral dilemma away for the moment. Let's find those fat heads! And she walks away. And it counts. <laughs> this, it, it almost counts. I Dare I, I say it, Jason? I think it counts as a sad walking away. A sad walking away? For those of you watching, A, I'm very sorry again. B, we tried to find a, a sound that's for to, to, to link everything to a common thing. Last year, we last week we used Reservoir Dogs. This week, yeah. I guess it's the Bill Bixby sad walk from the, every episode of The Incredible Hulk. Again, uh, every Monday morning for uh, The Secrets of Skinny People by Jeffrey Fallon. And check out the podcast, which... Uh, that was a good one, yeah. <laughs> It's available on YouTube and on Apple. Yeah. Maybe Jason can link it in the comments uh, for all the 150. If uh, you need something else, Barrett will listen to. And Jeffrey is a uh, is a great interview subject. You really find out is. a lot about the whole origins of the strip and how it advanced and how it's it evolved. 
and next week, ne- next week, i.e. tomorrow's episode is um, going to be a lot of fun. It's it's building up to something. What I don't know, but that's the whole point. You you don't want to know right away. I mean, it's just it's just so good. It's just such a good series, Chad. It's so yes. good. All right, let's move on. Uh, Ann Scove is delightful. Let's see what she has this week. She her work is coming in later on tonight. And All right, Ann. And this is a piece of 90s fashion this week. Late eight, the 80s, Papagallo. Papagallo. What was the Papagallo bag? A mystery? Um, <laughs> I, oh, God. Wooden handles. Let me increase my the size of my screen because... She went really for small ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, button ho- buttons with buttonholes, removable cloth cover. Meaning it was certainly preppy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I asked my, my girlfriend if she had one. She says no. But a lot of people in school did. I saw it. Your, your cousin. Your cousin. We're a little too young. That is true. But my sister, my my girlfriend, saying we were a little too young. But my girlfriend was not. I know. I mean, my sister was not. So I know she had at least uh, one of these bags. It was certainly preppy. I thought her uh, eyes out her polo sh- or uh, polo shirt couldn't fit on the on the shoulder. Even in, even in Ohio, it was considered preppy. <laughs> Inside, small hairbrush, L'Oreal lip gloss, bus card, not much more. <laughs> covers. Covers can be purchased separately or were reversible. Monogram, whales, Ooh. hearts, or plaid. Nice. The combination of preppiness, style over utility, ubiquity, was perfect for the 1980s. Like, totally. Like, Totally. That's every, great. Every, every week I remember something about my past I didn't think I knew but yes I get it you know do you know what a papagallo bag is my sister had one I'm sure of it okay I'm sure I it was my dog dog I don't remember alligators being on it or anything uh anything fancy but it was uh my sister had a array of uh of, of bags she had like a handbag for every day of the month at one point well then I did have an I I don't think I ever had an Izod shirt when I was in the 80s. I was full of hope and glimmer back then and I didn't have time for Izod shirts. I think I had a Whalen Park shirt. I had a I had a mother and father who wanted to be upscale, so yes, I did have an alligator shirt at one point. I don't think I ever had an alligator shirt or a polo shirt or any of those kind of shirts. All right, anyway. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Moving on for the cartoons for this week. Let's go to our No. Next- Oh, this is not a this is not a uh, cartoon. This is another Tanka, or just yeah, another Canto. Canto. Yes, another Canto from Stephen David Justin Sills. Uh, he's been incredibly prolific, almost like a columnist at this point. You know, um, for the last I don't know if this is the last one in his series. I'm going to find out. Yeah, uh, hopefully soon. He he told me he's actually doing a he's actually speaking. A special conference based on his uh, war poem works. So Oddball really? Magazine is getting attention from uh, beyond beyond our borders again, and uh, that's, that's largely great. because um, Mr. Sills is definitely uh, international, internationally abroad poet who's uh, written one collection called an American Papyrus, Parapus, and. Um, and the uh, his current Canto series is at number twenty one, as you can see here. Twenty one. So very impressed with that. I'll read the, just the first couple of stanzas just to get the audience, just to get the audience's mouth watering. <laughs> Canto twenty one of a war, papyrus. Of those with fetishes for war ravaged freaks, mulat, mulattoes of sorts engendered as antithetical blends of aged youth and pultritude, mauled, and the war-torn ravages of this life, atheists that they may, might be passively contemplating the next life indifferently, phlegmatically as the nothingness that it was. Who, veterans impaired and blighted as they were, were a novelty from those so perverted, yearned for. And not only for it, but for a suffit that would make them full, but fools they were scratching such an itch for such hungers were implacable, insatiable, and metastasized insidiously in time, ravaging the ravagers. Nice. More, more to come. More to come. Hopefully, as as another canto is being worked on. I hope. 
I haven't gotten a quite an update from him yet, but um, there's more on this poem, so check it out from last week. And now it's much more easier, much easier to um, maneuver around the site. So thanks to Jason for that. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit nicer, and it looks good on mobile too. Good to know. And All right, oddball stories, Chad. What do we got with Kristen Henderson? I read this one. This one's interesting for sure. This one's a little bit of a hard wrencher to me. Yeah. Titled "No One Told Me," and I'll just write, read the starting uh, paragraph for this one. Yeah. No one told me I'd wake up looking like a watermelon-shaped matahari with a colorless turban-like thing swooped around my head, or that I'd have little IVs in my toes that scorched my skin every time I moved, or that my blood sugar would go crazy from steroids, leading countless nurses to ask if I'm diabetic launching me into a rage of no i am not diabetic it was the steroids or that, or that I'd, be... I'd be an hero psych ward where a woman could have been 27 or 57 would moan in anguish all night pleading for someone to bring her baby back or when i politely uh, there's, only, there's only for four more there's only four more paragraphs oh yeah 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 but, yeah. but i do want to say you should read this um i i hardly i hardly think of best ofs you know i'm trying to get back into that thinking especially mm. since we have no, push card nomination this year to, uh, yeah. consider. but if there was a best of oddball stories this year i'd put Kristen's at the top of the list at the near top yeah this was a good one uh one of the ones i really enjoyed was the one about the the writer who lost his keys in the gym that was a good oh one. yes that was a good that was a There's good been a few they, they range from funny to dark humor to and since just like, you know, a light, you know, finding a light in the dark, which is what I would consider Kristen's to be. Yeah. And I love oddball stories so much. It's such a nice way to uh, get the week going. Uh, please keep on sending stuff to oddball stories. Uh, remember, they are they are supposed to be nonfiction memoir, uh, personal essays. That's the point. Um, love this uh although i mean i think some have squeaked by that might not be uh might have, might have been fiction but let's kind of we, we try to keep it you know memoir based and non-fiction so um that's why i changed the category to sit them submittable oddball stories dash dash non-fiction assholes and nothing <laughs> or something like that yeah yeah trademark all right <laughs> <laughs> Because right. I did do a blanket statement saying, please tell us if your story is nonfiction or otherwise. And I think a whole bunch of them were, they gave me the equivalent of, oh, oh, and, yeah. yeah. This is a Bill Wallach, so uh, fuck for the dick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you didn't hear that, Chad, right? I, I, I didn't hear anything. I have three ear infections, uh, one in each ear. So can continue. All right, Chad, what is going on with this one? Liam Gaynor, I needed something to, uh, it, this is a weird, this is a weird one to do. It's so dark. Yes. Is, is it dark on your computer too, or is it just my computer? It's, I, I think it's meant to be dark. All right. All right, this must have something to do with the poem. Go ahead, Chad. Why, you, you should read this one. Okay, all right. Oh, oh, you want me to write it? Okay. Uh, so looking at the image of the, the uh, here, uh, Searching the Back Eyes of Desire by Bill Wallach. Think it, feel it, think it, feel it, but don't say it. Drink it, smoke it, wank it, eat it, grouch, gouch it, fuck it, but don't say it. Spend hours with it from late night to early morning, endlessly surfing through YouTube videos, Miss a night's sleep before going into work. Let spiders nest in the corner of your room behind the tower of empty urn brew cans and brown paper bags of your just eat breakfast and dinners. Watch enough porn until your cum turns invisible. Thank you, Chad. Bruise and batter your cock to the point that when you look at it while standing in the toilet for eight hours, patiently waiting to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> piss razor blades you'll realize with regret that you'll never be able to bring yourself to eat prawns or nestle walnut whips ever again think it feel it but don't verbally confirm or acknowledge it to yourself or anyone else and ever wonder why that is <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> Razor blades. Oh, Liam Gaynor. <laughs> Liam Gaynor, I work in security and hospitality in Glasgow. I'm not writing about bars and clubs and drunken customers, and I'm usually writing about my struggles to keep a clean house, brush my teeth, and wash my body regularly in my spare time. Go ahead, Chad. Read both logs bio. <laughs> I'm glad this one's giving you so many, so many laughs. It yeah, wasn't my intention, but I'm, but I'm happy when that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell Did you, you, if, you, if, you, you shirt, about reading Bill Wallach. If you had an alligator shark collar, you'd be pulling at it like Ralph Furley right now. Pulled one yeah. Yeah, I know, right? 70 shark collars. Anyway. <laughs> that was, um, is it getting warm in here, Chad? Did I just say razor blades in my uh, – all right, anyway. <laughs> with my podcast. Bill well, Wallach. Bill Wallach is a poet, collage artist, and photographer who has just published his 18th book of poetry entitled All the Winds, Unfinished Kisses with Ecstasis Editions. His collages and photographs have appeared recently in the 2020 International Festival of Erotic Arts Erotic in Chile, Arts. the 2020 Seattle Erotic Art Festival, the 2020 Dirty Show in Detroit, the 2021 Rochester Erotic Art Arts Festival, the 2018 Montreal Erotic Art Festival, and Naked in New Hope 2018. He was a featured artist in Best of Erotic Art in London 2022. I was on in the this, cut I, I was I, wearing I, a bearskin rug. In, 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 past, in, past, in past posts, I've tried to do juxtapositions of the art and artist. The one I'm still most proud of was some there was a poet where some guy was like practically confessing to being a voyeur and uh. then i published sally brown which was a uh, a painted over embellished uh pay, a coloring book page and it was p for pig <laughs> I, I love that juxtaposition in a way this is almost in a way this is almost reversed yeah with the um uh, with the semi-revealing art or photography i should say from bill wallach and um, the and the very harsh the very harsh um, realities depicted in uh, Liam Gaynor's piece. Yeah, is he just talking about uh, too much masturbation? What is this poem about? Because he says I, I, poem. Think, I think at, at its core, if you want to get over the sex words, it's all about addiction in one form or another. All right, because he said it's all and it's all about a low point in the addiction too. Aren't prawns so shrimp? Yes. Eat prawns or Nestle walnut whips. You ever had a walnut whip, uh, Chad? What is that? I, I'm not sure what that is, but I didn't. I didn't need to know. Is that a Glasgow thing? Urn brew. What is that? You ever? I don't know. Urn brew. It's a great poem. It's really, really great. And uh, I, uh, I, I understand why you use Bill Wallach, but I feel like this is like a, this is a real think piece by Bill Wallach, man. Unless I'm seeing something I'm not seeing because it's so dark. It's it's a very um, I, I like it for it's one of his understated pieces as far as his photography goes. Yeah. He can be very overstated. Uh, yeah, he can be very he can be very revealing. He can be in his work, revealing. and this was a more muted piece, which I thought really went with the um, uh, 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 the yeah. Well, and, well, and also Bill Wallach is known for his erotic photography, and that was a yes. uh, a poem of. Uh, uh, Context. All right, next poem. Next poem. Uh, oh, it's mine. It's yours. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. All right, killer. <laughs> <laughs> and now for something completely different. Right. Now I need to find the Great Balls of Fire quote where um, Dennis Quaid as Billy Lewis sets the piano on fire <laughs> out of spite in the context of the movie because uh, Chuck Berry asked to perform last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Said, uh, he sets the piano on fire, plays it, <laughs> finishes out. Chuck Berry's just staring at him. Uh, Jerry Lewis walks by and goes, "Fall that killer!" <laughs> so, <laughs> That's the way he really did set his piano on fire, didn't he? Yes, he. Well, he, I, in the movie, he did. I don't know how much he did that in real life, but anyway. Pianos are expensive these days. You just don't throw them. Pianos, you don't are, throw them on fire. pianos are expensive. Yes. All right. 
Jag thought 497 creeping towards 500. This is an amazing. Sadness is another word for sacred. Oh, it's called fingerprints. 497 fingerprints. Yes. Sadness is another word for sacred. I like sadness. Sadness and melancholy. Had a baby. A baby with fucking rabies. And they named it after me. Me! Wish I could be a Los Angelino, but I am just lost. Beyond Boston in a small coffin. A low-cost coffin. It doesn't cost much to live my life. Just Medicaid, a sideshow clown. Give him a name, a dog, a wife, a baby, a house, a Hyundai. Books that speak to him. Poems with nothing to say. Let clouds rush into his sideshow veins and oxidize loneliness. Let him watch life pass him by as princess after princess leave fingerprints on what could have been a lovely life. Sunshine, baby, shine on me. I don't even exist. Okay, I'm just going to say I think you did kind of follow it. <laughs> in this piece I'm not I'm not even joking I'd forgotten how dark this piece was until you just read it out again yeah because I because I was reading this going damn so what was <laughs> your thinking doing this poem column well this is uh this is a poem where I uh another another poem just looking back at some unnecessary pain that I've experienced in my life hmm. uh some unnecessary loss that I've experienced just how I feel about myself and my place in the world. Um, and, you know, I, I think I, I try awfully too hard sometimes. and I'm a little bit too much for people. Um, and I realize that. And it's just something that is part of my life. And um, I've missed a lot of opportunities. I could be, could, my life could have went like a different way. And just... I don't mind depression and I don't mind melancholy. I'd rather be melancholy or sad most of the time. Um, it's a real emotion, you know, like mania or hypomania or whatever you want to call it is uncontrolled, but sadness is okay. It's, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be reflective and think life is not what you want it to be. And sometimes you're kind of out of control of like changing your sadness. It's not really something you can change. Um, but at least acknowledging it, you know, and, and knowing that it exists and knowing that not every day is sadness. Um, but at least I can Sometimes write when it's sad. What you need. Sometimes acknowledgement is all you need. Acknowledgement is a big thing. Um, you know, and just to acknowledge the sadness and that it's there and that it's okay to be sad because, uh, it's okay to be sad because it's, you know, it's just more acceptable to be sad than, than, uh, manic because they throw you in ho hospitals with manic but they just they let you live under the wire sad so i think that's i think that's what that poem means hmm. that's wow i'm not even gonna put in the bill bicks and be music like the whole music like i thought it was <laughs> you, you just you nailed it so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna step all over you and now for something now completely meta. different. This is, this is the previous Oddball show from October 2nd to God, October God, that 6th. one was funny, Chad. I didn't even listen to it, but I had a blast while, uh, doing it. I'm pretty sure, actually, I might have listened to it. This one was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I, I definitely, I definitely. Um, Did you listen to it, Chad? I definitely got my Reservoir Dogs in. That, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. You think out of the blue? <laughs> you think out of the blue? He's just gonna decide out of the blue. Did yeah, you use to, did you used to say to stole soup poetry out of the blue? And out of the blue? <laughs> Don't worry, son. I know what's happening. This lump of shit's working for the can tab. <laughs> like, uh, if you fall, if, if 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 you shoot me in a dream, you wake up and apologize. <laughs> that's 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 Reservoir Dogs, right? Yes, I, I can get into that movie as long as I delete, as long as I fast forward through the whole like a virgin monologue by. Oh, that's uh, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, by Tarantino, I have to, you know, take that out. It's a four star movie. <laughs> four, four and a half take, at best. Take that out. It goes to three stars. It's just like <laughs> it's just like God. 
That's where he, that's You're going to be okay. How can a movie start? You're going to be okay. How can a movie start? Okay. How can a movie start and slow down at the same time? That it just crawls to a halt. <laughs> really put that starts. song on the map though, Chad. Really put stuck in the middle with you on the map. Very true. I mean, that's all right. Anyway, anyway, you know? this is a Bill Bixby themed episode. This is a Hulk episode. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a sad walk themed episode. I have a, no uh, idea if if they're gonna be like, <laughs> Lou Ferrigno owns your copyright. <laughs> Lou Ferrigno, right? If anything, it's Disney. Probably. Oh yeah. Whoever, oh, uh, if it's Disney, then we're screwed. Disney's gonna come off for every last cent. Disney has lightened up a little bit, probably because they have the Star Wars property, and George Lucas has always been. I won't. I don't want to say fast and loose with the copyright, but he's been generous to other people. So hopefully, some of that generosity rubs off to us. Well, you know, I mean, I was going to choose the new oddball character, Mackie Miss, but uh, <laughs> Mackie Miss. It's like it's like a mouse named Mackie Miss the mouse. Okay, now, 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 sir, you can tell us all about the article by uh, Krishna Kona and explain. All right, to, but uh, if you want to check out Oddball Show, they all they, they all uh, exist on Oddball Magazine about a week after they're done, and it's an ongoing cycle. I doubt on, their on YouTube. Time to record one of these, then I doubt my own existence. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this is a very great piece uh, by Krishna Kona. Did you, commission, is, did you commission this to from Prishna? Nope. Prishna's currently um, Oddball Foundation uh, intern, and she wrote uh, we uh, she wrote about this uh, the idea of intergenerational trauma after a discussion mm -hmm. that we all had, and she did some really great research, um, and it's so well documented, um, and you know. It really does talk about adverse childhood experiences right here, but it also says like social conditions and generational embodiment and historical trauma it actually goes beef like beyond your childhood it goes before your childhood mm. you know and where you're at your social conditions your the context of where you live it's not just what you experience as a child uh but it does disrupt your neurodevelopment your social emotional cognitive impairment adoption health risk behavior disease disability and early death so um trauma is uh a real real thing but it, i mean the adverse child experience is just a just a really good marker of how someone might experience their life 20 years from what they experienced as a kid but even if you look back farther than that you can really look into historical trauma and even cultural trauma and all those kind of things and how you look at the world and your your world view so this is a really great read. Um, I, I, I'd love to get this published in other journals. I'd love to like Madden America to take a look at this or uh, someone to get a real pull on this one because it's such a good, good piece. Um, and it goes through the idea of multi-generational trauma. Um, and it talks about the idea of traumas in general. And then it also talks about healing and breaking the cycle with therapy and cultural reconnection, community connections, mindfulness, uh, and generational trauma is an intricate tapestry of emotions. Um, it's a path of empowerment and growth. As we navigate our inherited pain, we have the power to transform our own lives and contribute to breaking the cycle for generations to come. Prisha, Prisha Kona is a high school student located in New Jersey. Her passion for mental health has led her to educate herself and others on various mental health topics, especially those she has experience with. She feels that if she is able to let others know about these uncommon issues, she can help others be aware and understand the challenges they may face. Uh, so it does talk about what intergenerational trauma is, but then it talks about uh, thoughts, ways to heal from that intergenerational trauma and yes. just do a little deeper dive into what it means. So. Um, I am so proud that that piece came out of Oddball Foundation. So, um, and I'm also proud of this Glenn Bowie piece. This piece is, I love it. It's, it's beautiful. It's now, yes. colorful and cryptic and awesome. So let's talk about it. Terry Long Carrick. A handsome Carrick. corpse. One man made a pass. Another asked if my mom was going to take in borders. All the conversations heard, if you can believe it, at my father's funeral. 
All the while, my father smiled from inside his casket, as if he actually heard these conversations. Yes, my father was the rarest of souls, a handsome, smiling corpse. This is actually one of a, a series of pieces. It's not everything, not, not just include, including more than just what I published this week. A lot of things of loss coming out in the last couple of months. And uh, I decided to focus both of them into um, into um, public in, into being published on Wednesday for the theme. I love this, I, and I love the art pairing. It's not art. I know it's for, I know it's photography, but I know what you mean. You know, it's it's a beautiful pairing, and it, it gives this vibrantness to death. You know, with like the colors around it and like a little beauty to it, and. What an awesome poem pairing. Um, I do like others. Terry Long Carrick, or Lon Cherick. Yeah, I am the author of two collections of poetry Poetry in an Age of Panic for Kelsey Books and Crashing in Velvet for Finishing Line Press. I've had three lives as a poet, an educator, and a journalist, and they somehow intermingle in my realm inspired poetry. I'm working on a third book of exclusive travel narratives Poems from a Restless Traveler. Glenn Bowie is a published poet, lyricist, musician, and photographer from the Boston area. He also owns and operates elevator companies and supplies custom-built elevators for, for clients from New England to Hollywood. Author of two poetry and photograph collections, Under the Weight of Whispers and Into the Thorns and Honey, on Big Table Publishing, he donates all his profits from his books to various charities for the homeless and local animal shelters. Nice. Chad, tell, so, uh, you know... Um, have you ever read Glenn Bowie's uh, books or ever seen them? I have not, but I know they're. I believe they're on order from Amazon. Oh, nice! Yeah, check check out Glenn Bowie, especially his his photographs and poetry. Um, and Terry Long Long Carrick, poetry in an age of panic and crashing in velvet. Um, Finishing line press. I've heard a lot about them, right? Mm. Finishing line press. Fishing line press. Is that what you're saying? Finishing line. Well, fishing line press is cool, but no, finishing line press. Have you heard of them? Wait a second. Fishing Line Press. Yeah, they, they've been around for decades. Yeah, finishing. you said Fishing Line Press. I said Finishing Line Press. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is definitely a... Oh, John Engstrom. I met John Engstrom. He's a nice guy. Oh, when did you meet him? On a Zoom call. Oh, right, right, right. I don't remember which one it was, but I was like, wow, John Engstrom, you sound familiar. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're an oddball all the time. And he read some poetry, and it was awesome, and uh, talked about his art for a little bit. We're going to so, read the first poem by uh, Beatty, Beatty, Secret Daughter. I think you got the last part right. Definitely yeah, daughter. Yes. Uh, Beatty, B-E-A-T-E. Beat? Beat? Secret Daughter? Beatty? Beauty, beauty. It's got to be beauty. Beauty? We're going to find out. <laughs> oh, it's German. Is it? But, uh, given the last name, I'm not surprised. All right, so this uh, is called Quit Giving Me That Stippled Look by John Engstrom. Yes. All right, Chad, go for it. One second. Okay. Yeah, not bad. We're doing okay. Beata is how, they, is how they're saying to pronounce it. Beata? That's how I just got it from the from online from the YouTube pronunciation channel. Beata Segredata. Yes. Nice. And, and did I say Lankaric right? Was that not right? I I, I think so. There's two right. poems here, and I want to right. uh, I want to read. I'll read the first one, and you read the rest. I of can you read the second one if you want, or maybe not. Well, I think we should. We, let's keep. Yeah, we'll leave one. We'll leave mystery in the in the mystery let's in keep the. Keep readers wanting more. Keep them wanting more, sir. Yeah, let's not tell them how the sausage is made. Go ahead, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, the big picture. There are days when she longs to belong somewhere, not like, not live like a jigsaw puzzle. Most days she looks for how the pieces fit. At times, like an impatient child, she wants to secretly take off the corner or of a piece or jam it in by force. So far, she has managed to resist. Sometimes she is patient and serene and wants to believe when wise folks tell her she is exactly where she belongs. 
Feeling that, however, tends to be more tenuous. At other times, she questions if this is even a picture she wants, and then it all claims her again with its erratic edges. And to give you a little hint of the um, second poem, this was primary. The second poem was primarily why I picked the above piece, which seems to be very abstract by John Engstrom, but I think it was. I, I think it spoke to me to link the two pieces. Yeah, I absolutely. I, I see it too. Um, now you look at the art, it's really something. Yes. something. I don't know how someone, a uh, beautiful, beautiful pairing. Um, all right, Chad, have you clicked on this link to see if, if it goes to her blog? I believe it does because I linked it myself. All right. There it is. Wild about women's writing. And uh, there's her latest. She can follow. Hey, her look at that! Audible magazine published my prose poems. And she, um, and she, and she noted the uh, the la the most recently published poems in Oddball magazine. So thank you to that. Thanks thank you call. so much. That's great. She's been published a ton. Oh, she's been published in one in the house. Yes. Matt Swirl. Jeez, for that. Oh wow, a lot. A lot. Let's not man. get jealous. If you we look too long, we'll get jealous. Let's go on to the next. Uh, let's go on to Thursday. <laughs> That's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> just walk away. I just walk right, away right. jealous. I, I, so, I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm going to walk away jealous. <laughs> All I can do is bob my head like a muppet. <laughs> Yes. You want to read her bio? Thursday. So Thursday. Yeah, read her bio real quick. Oh, the bio. Oh, the bio. <laughs> daughter grew up in Nuremberg, Germany. The playgrounds were nearby castle and World War II bomb ruins. She lives in Silver City. I can't do it. Germany. She lives in Silver City. <laughs> Land of Enchantment, where she was Poet Laureate from 2017 to 2000. Yeah, congratulations. Her occasionally prize-winning work is widely published in literary magazines and her blog writing in A Woman's Voice. She publishes, well, other women's voices. And John Engstrom is a Boston-based oh, artist, right. author, poet, <laughs> a retired journalist, museum worker. He serves as arts critic for the Fenway News. His yes. closets and poems appear on Facebook and Divergence Magazine. Chad, have you ever checked out Fenway News or Divergence Magazine? I have checked it out on occasion. He's actually even had poetry published there as well. Ah. Yes. Okay. Hey, Chad, do you think we should uh, – I mean, it's all one thing. is used the same banner for uh, 10 years. If, well, hopefully we'll be able to uh, – hopefully we'll be able to photograph him live and uh, – and yeah, get maybe we'll shake it up. Maybe we'll shake up, some, uh, shake, shake up this banner with James. I'll James do my best. Or I'll see if I can photograph him out in the uh, Boston Common where he actually draws his labyrinth that his poems are based on. Yeah, maybe like get a picture of the labyrinth or him in the Boston Common or whatever. Yeah, we could do something. We'll figure it out. This is All the right. uh, this is a big piece, so I'm only going to do first couple of lines. But it's um, for those of you who have not been following James, he is he chases his passions, and his passions of, in recent years have been following his family's tree. And as well as his family's history and even um, published work from his family, like his, an autobiography is published by one of his descendants. So it's, um, it, and it starts with this poem, with these lines. In the second volume of my cousin's, actually my great grandfather's cousin's novel of growing up in Netherlands, Harlem and Holland as an orphan apprentice painter of carriages he is sent on an errand to carry glasses on a hexagonal tray on his shoulder through De Drief, right near the Harlem Erhout. The town woods now become park. I walked almost every night I was there the last time and still is surrounded by a line of freestanding houses, really mansions, and then goes out heroin wig, gentleman's way, to Molinar. Tamanar Slantage, yeah. Miller's right. Lane, because otherwise the marble painted glasses will cut too much into his shoulder. And this is the easy way I realize that Molinar 
is the family name of my son's wife, who originally from Harlem migrated in World War II to South Africa in the form of her father's father, her paternal grandfather. And I'm just going to cut it there. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. It's, uh, it's a wonderful history. It's a wonderful story that if you keep on reading James, he always rewards. And I have a feeling even more poems like this are going to come yep. because he just recently went on another family sojourn around Europe. Oh, really? Was, yes. He did oh, that over. Oh. He did that in the month of uh, September. Oh, that's awesome. James Van Loy has been a fixture in Boston's poetry venues since the 1970s a member of Cosmic Splunkert Theater and has run poetry workshops for Boston area homeless people at Pine Street Inn and St. Francis House since 92. Van Loy leads the Labyrinth Creative Movement Workshop, which his Labyrinth title poems are based on. His work appears weekly in Oddball Magazine. And for the last 506 weeks, come on, guys, give it up. Give it up, everybody. <laughs> give it up. Applause for James. Uh... Chad, ready? Janet Cormier? You can read Janet. I, I want right. you to read Janet. I want you to read your favorite Bruce Wise poem. All right. We will do that. And we, we'll, we'll send off everybody happy and healthy. with hey, the night. How many people are listening now? Minus five? <laughs> oh, well. Um, <clears throat> I'm on the Falcons. All right. Um, Janet That's Cormier, true. Bamboozle No More. Yeah. Nothing to be learned. Remember <laughs> to stay out of your own way. Don't let the past haunt you. Find a way to embrace each day with patience, understanding, and I don't care what anyone says. Laughing is a perfect exercise. I very rarely let Janet get away with exclamation points in her work, but uh, this time I made the this time I made the first exception in like five years. It makes sense. Stay your own way, and it's something I, I don't ever do. I think it does. Janet Cormier is a painter, writes prose and poetry, and performs comedy. Janet prefers different and original over pretty, loves collecting stuff, but cleaning not so much, she talks to strangers a lot, and her column appears weekly on Oddball Magazine and has for a long, awesome time. All right, now we're on to Bruce. All right, you pick yours, I'll pick All right, mine. All right, you're going to read one. Okay, yeah, let's see. We're gonna... Bruce Weiss, for those of you who don't know, is a, a man who writes multiple poems under multiple aliases, all of which are anagrams, of his name, Brucey Wise. How do you do this, Bruce? Like, seriously. I mean, my poems, I think I'm a good writer, you know, and I can never do this. Ever. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, mio babino caro by Ewalde E. S. Brook. Oh, mio babino caro, the soprano aria in Giano Chiki by Giacomo Puccini is so beautiful, heartfelt, and brief that one is sorry it is over so oh too soon after its beginning leaves in 32 bars of andantito ingenuo its first inversion chord is used four times in genuine pure love with hope and desperation panning in upon the moment seeing the daughter pleading with her dear papa as well as the esbrick is a poet of art music giacomo puccini 1858 to 1924 was a realist italian composer hashtag giacomo puccini I wonder if there is a hashtag for Chicago. I'm not going to do a soprano uh, singing. I can't. But, <laughs> I want to sit back on my couch. I'm going to read The Couch Potato by Cobb Edies Rio. He leaned back on the couch to watch another show. He felt the pillow underneath his head squish down. He clicked on his remote. Oh, it was time to go. He lay back slightly ruffled as the scene unwound. A man had come into the picture forcefully. He was bound and determined to thrust, hit and pound, astounding the reclining dude, not on TV. He gazed in horror as the man began to rush into the place he'd come to so vigorously. The watching guy felt he was being bushwhacked, shoved. Reality had morphed into sheer vertigo. He pressed the button, pause, and kicked back on his touch. Wow. Awesome. And so will I. And so will <laughs> you. It's sad reclining because the weekend's over. <laughs> the weekend is over. And instead of sad walking away, I'm just going to sad recline. <laughs> we can't stop for copyright, Chad. Oh, my God. That's so funny. All right. Um, 
Chad. It'll be worth it. What's going on with those soups this week, Chad? This coming week, we have Lil Delucio featuring on the 18th. And I can tell you now, before it even gets posted, we have Rick McIntyre featuring Ooh. on uh, Wednesday the 25th. It's, it feels good knowing who my features are again. I, I, I feel good being able to go ahead and be ahead of things. Um, <coughs> and the... Um, and he's gonna be he's filming from a special location to be announced once it's finalized and once uh i have permission to do to tell him that's fantastic this is on wednesday at seven o'clock wednesday at seven o'clock is the 18th with local Lucio, and then wednesday at seven uh, wednesday at the seven at seven on the 25th is rick mcintyre any other news you got right now chad any uh, new stuff anything you uh any uh events coming up or anything like that no, it's pretty quiet this week. Hopefully, I'll get a couple of pieces published on Medium. I'm trying to get myself back on track, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you get at least another article on Substack about Vince McMahon. <laughs> so, <of all> things. <laughs> and keep 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 posted. We we're gonna we're gonna talk some Oddball Foundation stuff real soon. Okay. About some events. Uh, Chad, you can meet up with us on Tuesday to talk about it. We'll, we'll be. I'll be there on Tuesday. I don't think Tim will be, but I'll be there. Fantastical. All right. Um, uh, can you play this, the, the music out for us? You really want me to do it again? Yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. This has been Chad Prento and Jason Wright of uh, Oddball Magazine. I uh, hope you have a ready? wonderful weekend. We're already. And, uh, we're done. Hey, everybody. What are we doing? Tell that next time. Oh God! Bye, everybody. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye, Take care. Good, good. Show's over. Bye, bye. And that was the week that was, and that was a fun show. Um, and I hope uh, everyone is having a great day uh, and a good weekend. And uh, all you can do is be yourself, and hopefully, people like you for who you are. And then, if you don't they won't like you we shall see right anyway this is jason wright and um it's been oddball show that was the week that was and we'll see you real soon read a book I'm not gonna tell you what to do i'm just not gonna tell you what to do but i read books you can do whatever the hell you want this is jason wright this has been oddball show and we'll, we'll see you real soon bye bye everybody <laughs>